Hi guys, and welcome to another edition of The Kevin Moore Show. Now on today's show, I'm about to be joined by my guest, Steve Burgess, who is one of the world's leading hypnotherapists and past life regression specialists. Now he's completed thousands of past life regression sessions, helping his clients with a wide range of issues, including phobias, anxieties, depression, addiction, physical illness, and more. His work involves using hypnosis to regress people back to the emotional root causes of their problems now often back to previous lifetimes now steve divides his time between the uk and norway steve burgess welcome to the show my pleasure kevin it's great to be with you uh congratulations on your new book the power of past life regression um how many lifetimes did it take to get this book done (laughs) (laughs) Well, my first, my first book was in 2011, and I haven't written another book since then. And it, as you know, it's such a, a long process, um, getting an agent, getting a publisher, etc. But uh, to see it finally out there, uh, what was it, three weeks ago now, it's finally on the shelves, it's finally available through all the booksellers, Amazon, etc. Um, and it's like, oh, wow, thank you. It's, it's, it, and it's, it's a great achievement. It really is a great achievement to have a book published. I know that. Oh, absolutely it is. I mean, you know, the blood, sweat and tears to get that put out, to, to, to choose the yeah. best bits as well. Do you know what I mean? Because I bet there was some material that you think, oh, I wish I had left that out. But, you know, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. um, and in fact, I've, I've, I've saved some. I've just finished my third book, uh, wow. again, which I'm not looking for a publisher. And, I've, and some yeah. of the stuff I didn't use in this book, I'm using in the third book. So that's quite useful, really. Absolutely. <laughs> it is. Absolutely. So you're a, a fellow Brit like myself. Uh, you um, have been, well, you, you are based in Norway, um, but you're currently in the UK right now because obviously we're all on lockdown as we take this. Um, so I appreciate you coming on. Um, Just tell us a little bit about yourself to begin with, because where did you start? How did you get into this this career as well? Mm. Um, Well, I was a director of a publishing company, uh, which went bust, and it took some of my money with it. And uh, I thought, what am I going to do now? My father had been playing with hypnotherapy for a little while because um, he'd actually stopped smoking using hypnosis and it had had blown his socks off. He couldn't understand it. Uh, My dad's a scientist, a left brainer by profession. And um, he couldn't understand how it was that he, he went to see this man. I mean, he tried everything to stop smoking. Nothing had worked. He went to see this man who laid him in a comfortable chair talk to him softly and gently about stopping smoking. My dad didn't want cigarettes anymore, and he couldn't understand it. His scientific brain couldn't compute. So he started to read up about hypnotherapy, and the more he read, the more fascinated he became. So he then went and trained as a hypnotherapist and started playing with it privately, seeing clients privately from home. Um, so, you know, I sort of got involved in a gentle way like that. And then when the publishing company went bust, he said, why don't you just be a hypnotherapist, get trained? And I thought, okay, better than working for a living. And so, uh, I got trained up and actually I was fortunate in that I'm, I'm what's called a natural therapist. You know, some people are natural violinists, some people are natural footballers, natural sports people, natural doctors, being a therapist for me is a natural process. It's just something I should have done a long time ago. So it fitted me like a glove. And uh, my career started 28 years ago and has been moving ever since then in many different directions. And, uh, you know, the, the book is just another aspect of what I do nowadays. Uh, right. Absolutely. Now, did your father ever get into the past life aspect of the work? No, and he still doesn't believe it. Even though he proofreads my books and we discuss it, he still thinks that he doesn't know. These are very interesting cases. Obviously, clients get a lot better and it's a great therapy, but he's still not convinced about past lives. Uh, Whereas I'm coming at it totally convinced, having done so many thousands and thousands of past life regression sessions. So you've done over 15,000 hypnotherapy sessions and mm-hmm. uh, many thousand regressions. So what's the difference then between um, hypnotherapy and regression to begin with? Hypnotherapy is using the state of hypnosis in order to get somebody better. So hypnosis itself is just, a, a in a way, it's a form of relaxation. It's perfectly natural. We all go into trance every day when we relax, when we daydream, when we go on automatic pilot in the car. These are trance experiences. So trance and hypnosis is natural. Uh, 
Hypnotherapy uses that trance state to tap into the subconscious mind, which is the 99.99% of the mind that we don't usually use, to help people to get better from all types of problems, not just smoking, weight loss, but phobias, depression, anxieties, lack of confidence, physical illness, et cetera, et cetera. So hypnotherapy would usually use the trance state by uh, taking somebody into trance and then giving them hypnotic suggestions. The aim is to reprogram the subconscious. So the subconscious hears some new suggestions, it takes them on board, and the person is able to change. And sometimes the basic hypnotherapy also uses visualizations where people imagine various things. And we also do metaphors. So that's hypnotherapy. Regression within hypnotherapy, to regress simply means to go back into the past. So we all regress quite naturally again. If I say to you, what did you have for dinner last night? And you'll think about what you had and you'll say, I had whatever steak and chips. You've just regressed. In a therapy session, the aim of regression is to go back to the cause of a problem. I call it the emotional root cause. In order to either find out what's caused the problem in the first place or to release the emotion which is locked in the subconscious which is causing the problem in this lifetime. So that's what regression is about. It's about going back in a gentle trance state, sometimes a deep trance, to relive something from the past in order to release the emotions and the energies that are locked in the subconscious. Right. Okay. And when did you first um, start? Um, I don't want to use the word, but I'm going to say, you know, playing around with um, past life regression in a sense. That the first time kind of experiment with, with it as well. It happened quite spontaneously, Kevin, and it, it was one of the, a massive shock for me. I hadn't been trained in past life regression. Very few people in the, in the early 90s, hardly anybody was. Um, and after about six months in, in, in practice, in general practice, a young man came to me in his early 20s who was suffering from an extremely severe anxiety state. And he sat in front of me in my office, and he was, in English, we say he was a bag of nerves. He was shaking, he was hyperventilating, he was stammering, and, and, and it, it, talk, to talking like this. I'm saying, so how long have you had this problem for? And he said, well, it's been like this for, for, for years. I've always been a worrier, but, but the last few months, it's just got so bad. I can't, I've had to give my job up. Um, I sit at home all the time. I'm just tense. I can't sleep. Uh, doctors giving me tablets, which are not working. Uh, my, my wife is just so sick of it. She's going to divorce me if, if I don't get better, which of course wasn't going to help him either. Uh, the threat of that. But he said, since we had the children, it's got worse. This, this anxiety has got worse. It's been with me for years. So I thought, okay, well, I'll do a standard hypnotherapy session. I'll guide him into trance. I'll relax him down. I'll see about putting some new suggestions in the subconscious in order to help him to feel calmer. So I did that. I took him into trance, and he relaxed beautifully. He just laid back in the chair, and he was extremely calm. So I'm thinking, okay, this is a standard session. I'm about to give him some hypnotic suggestions. And bear in mind, this was about 10 minutes into the trans session. And then all of a sudden, he started to shake. And he started to shake and move and writhe. And his head was going from side to side. And then he started to, he, he was half shouting and half whispering. No, no, hide, hide the children, hide in here. Hide, they're coming, they're coming. No, 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 no. Hide, hide, quiet, 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 quiet. No, 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 no. Ah! And he was screaming and yelling in his arms. And then he, he just went, oh. And he was completely still. And I'm sitting there with my words thinking, what the, what the heck's going on here? He was completely still. So I said, are you okay? Oh, he said, I feel wonderful. Oh, I feel absolutely fantastic. I feel so calm. I, I've never felt like this in my life. I feel so relaxed. This is incredible. So I said, well, I don't. <laughs> but I said, so what, what was it? What was happening? He said, it was like it was in another life. I was a man and, and we had children and there were soldiers coming and we were trying to hide. And then the soldiers came in and found us and they shot us all and I, I died. But I feel so relaxed. I've never felt like this before. 
And his problem was completely cured in those 10 minutes, Kevin. And I thought, this is significant. Why don't I know about this? This is so significant. I'd known about reincarnation for many years. I'd studied it since I was 13. I was actually a Buddhist for quite a long time, a practicing Buddhist. Um, So I'd got the concept of reincarnation. But as working in therapy, it it was very new. So then I got some information from uh, America, how to work with it. And I started to then, as you say, play with it, use it and treat it seriously, not in a, a weird or new agey way, but to develop it as a credible therapeutic discipline to such a degree. Now I have I've created my own system of work, uh, a regression system, which um can take a client back not just into past lives but also into this life also into our ancestors lives for ancestral regression because we can inherit through from our ancestors and and we so i use regression in all these different ways and for me it's the most important therapy the most powerful therapy that i know and i've I've been doing this for 28 years and I've trained in lots of different therapies, but for me, regression is the number one and it is fascinating. And you teach it yourself now as well. Yes. I've been running courses for for a number of years, about 20 years now. I both train people to be hypnotherapists and I also run regression courses to train therapists in how to do this and to do it properly. Yes, because obviously there's a lot of different um, training platforms out there for this work. What makes mm-hmm. yours different and, and what would you, would you advise to stay away from? Uh, I don't believe you can learn this online. Um, for me, it's a practical skill. So some people will just do a cheap online course. It isn't enough. I do four days of in-house training to people who are already therapists. Some people just do a one-day course. It isn't enough. I could actually, I mean, I do four days, then I do a further three days of advanced training if people want to go even further. I treat it extremely seriously because, I mean, we don't always get those dramatic clients, like as I've just explained. Not all sessions are that dramatic. Some are incredibly dramatic. Sometimes the client is is really screaming and yelling. And you've got to know what to do. And because, you know, we're working with the human mind, you've got to be very careful with the mind um, because we've got to make sure we don't make people worse. So for me, I put in safeguards all the way down the the line in order to make sure that not only is the client safe, but they get better at the end of the sessions. And this is all things that you've learned on the journey and experience that you've had. Just remind us of your website as well. It's lionheart-training.com, lionheart as in Richard the Lionheart-training.com. And my WordPress site is uh, a long one, hypnoblogpod.wordpress.com. Okay, well, we're going to link that in the description below. That's coming up on the screen as we speak. Your website is as well. So, okay, so all issues then that we have, maybe not a lot of trauma issues, let me say it that way, um, are maybe created from the from the past, you know, from past lives. The regression model is that all of our issues as human beings come from locked in feelings and emotions from the past, and that's either emotions from this lifetime, and of course, most of us carry emotional baggage from this life, uh, from previous lives, from ancestors' lives. For me, the most powerful and the core of it is past lives. And um, I'm always quite astonished that people don't look at it seriously. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll mock it. I've been standing above the parapet for 28 years now and having my head shot at um, because I, I champion uh, the, the, the fact that past life regression is not some sort of weird or new age belief. It's a very powerful, effective therapy. And the client doesn't even have to believe in past lives. You know, not most, most, pe- most people come to me they just want to get better. They say, I'm depressed. I want help or I've got a phobia. I can't live my life. I've, I've seen one lady who was so agoraphobic, she couldn't even leave the front door of her house. So people just want to get better. But I use a system where I ask the subconscious, whereabouts are the emotional traumas that are causing this condition? And it tells me by taking control of a finger on one of the hands. And I just ask yes, no questions. The finger moves for yes, or it stays very still for no. And I'm just saying, is there anything in this life causing the phobia? Yes or no? 
Are there any past lives causing the phobia? Yes or no? If we get a yes, how many past lives? Is it one, two, three? So we can find exactly the number of past lives. And then we get permission to go back and regress back to the emotional traumas and release them. And it isn't fun. Uh, you know, we see quite a lot of emotion coming through and sometimes the client shakes, but it is so powerful and effective. It gets the job done. Now, obviously you do, um, or you've started doing uh, regression sessions online now, um, I suppose, especially in today's environment. Um, you know, it, it's kind of forced you to do some of that and it, and it works. Very much so. I've always been a therapist who would like to be in the room with the client. And so I've done Skype sessions for years on and off, but I've always resisted them. But now I've been forced to do Skype sessions and they're going incredibly well. And actually, I'm, I've had to revise my thoughts about doing work online. The sessions go very well. My clients are getting better. Um, <clears throat> I'm loving the job. You know, I'm loving working in this way. So um, my old resistance has completely crumbled. And in, in a way, this sort of this lockdown has, has been beneficial for me in that respect. Right, right. Now, have you, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Have you had your own past life regression? Uh, yes, I have. Now, the, one of the problems with me is, I, not one of my problems, is that I'm not very visual. And what that means is I find it very difficult to see pictures in my mind's eye. And of course, most regression sessions like the ones that i'm written about in the book are descriptions of what people are seeing and doing i don't see anything my body just feels it and so when i regress back i just feel that whatever is happening my body moves and jerks or emotions come through um so i don't get a lot of description but i do get an intuition about what's happening so i, I got a sense that I, I was in the first world war uh, and died in the First World War in, in the trenches as a soldier. Um, the worst death that I went through was absolutely horrible. And I was hung, drawn, and quartered somewhere in the 15 or 1600s. Now, I'm not sure if uh, people in America know much about this, but in, the, in England, for 200 years, if you were uh, executed, to make you suffer as much as possible, they would do this business where they would hang you by the neck until you were nearly dead, cut you down, and then open your guts up, quarter you, and start taking your guts out in front of your eyes to cause you as much pain as possible. And sometimes they'd make it last for hours. And I had that as a death experience in a past life. And uh, it took me six goes. I had to go back through the death at least six times to fully release it, which wasn't fun. But actually, funnily enough, the worst aspect was that I had been betrayed in that life. And as I was being uh, executed, I sensed there were a group, a lot of people around, but there was also a group of people close to. And one of the men in that group, I felt, was my wife at that time, my ex-wife. And my sense was, my intuition was that she'd betrayed me in that lifetime and I died in that horrible way. No wonder we got divorced. <laughs> <Completely>. <laughs> Well, sometimes you come back, don't you, to um, to work out that karma. It's it's worked out in different ways. I've used the word karma yeah, there. I'll have to go back into yeah. that that in a bit. Um, <laughs> you know what your thoughts are on that. But yeah, that there's things that we've the patterns that we've still got to work out. And you know, the, the, w people come into our life, don't they, for a reason? Mm -hmm. And then relationship problems very often can uh, connect back to um, to past lives. Um, so yeah. many relationship problems can do that. But when you were going through something as terrible as what, what you were re-experiencing there and six times to go through something as terrible as that, and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of us that have gone through something like that in our past or burned to the stake or whatever it may have been. Um, it's, it's incredible how that, that it's almost like that past life's happening now and it's causing the issues in this current life. I mean, that would exactly. say that that time isn't really what we think it is. No. Time is not linear. It, I mean, time, th this whole process, when you think about time, is quite mind-blowing. Um, I tend to keep it very simple for my clients that, you know, it's as if there is a line of time and we go back along the line of time to something a long time ago. But, you know, who knows what time is? Maybe it doesn't exist. Um, some people think that what is happening now happened hundreds of years ago. What happened hundreds of years ago is happening right now as well. There is even the concept of parallel worlds, parallel universes. I have a client in Norway, for example, who 
sometimes in her therapy sessions connects into a parallel world where things are traumatizing her in the parallel world and affecting her now, which is a little bit strange. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. But, um, you know, the whole concept of time is, is a little bit meaningless. So, um, but we've been around each other so many times in so many cases. And uh, as you say, some people come into our lives to teach us things. What did that do to get that particular past life that you just described there healed in a sense? Did you heal it or did you, did you, was it, were you able to use that to help you in other ways? Like, for example, to release your past life, your wife, basically, your previous marriage to, you know, was that part of that basically no the the main thing was going through the energy going through the emotional release letting my body feel the trauma okay i didn't feel the pain we don't feel uh pain like that from past lives We, we feel the energy of the pain so my body went through the energy of that and i had to go back several times this is a feature of regression therapy it's actually where a lot of regression therapists go wrong because they only will take a client back through a trauma once when often you have to go through it several times to fully clear it. And that does take a degree of courage on behalf of the therapist and the client, of course, Uh, because as I said, this isn't fun because one of the things with regression, past life regression, it's usually death trauma that we're working on. I would guess i would estimate that about 60 percent of past life regression work is releasing death trauma from past lives where we've died in a traumatic way or our life has been cut short a happy life has been cut short etc etc and the impact it has upon us in this lifetime can be quite dramatic so the client's subconscious knows best in a sense so your subconscious knew best to send you to that particular life uh, which will be the most helpful for you right now. Yes, very much so. Well, what had happened, I'd been on a 13-day uh, shamanic retreat, uh, an enclosed retreat, uh, where we worked very deeply on ourselves for 13 days. And I came off the retreat, and I felt really angry for a week. It was like some of my stuff was up, and and it hadn't been worked on fully, worked through or resolved in the retreat. So I realized that I needed to do some work. So... I took myself into trance and then this past life came through uh, and really got rid of the anger. You'd think, wouldn't you, you know, uh, not that we understand anything right now, right? What do we really (laughs) know, right? These are just words we're using to describe something that helps us, right? But you'd think, wouldn't you, if if the soul, when when the soul uh, continues, you know, leaves the body, you'd think it would, um, that would be enough to just not need to, you know, look back at that life or that life not to affect you in any future lives that you're going to have. Um, but it's not the case, is it? It's it, for some reason. <laughs> it isn't the case. And, and uh, quite often a client may come with several past lives that are causing a problem, uh, not just one. Um, I mean, I had one lady who was claustrophobic, um, you know, fear of enclosed spaces. And she also had a need to yawn and to gasp for air all of the time which is pretty embarrassing for her because she was a teacher. And you can imagine at the front of a class all the time, which is <sighs> gasping for air. And we found that there were, I think there were seven or eight past lives. And sometimes the, 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 these were all deaths and everyone had a death that caused the problem, that, that was building to the problem in this life. And quite often the death mirrors what the problem is. So in the first past life, she was uh, butchered uh, by some soldiers and buried alive. So, of course, obviously she couldn't get air, so she was gasping for air. So there's a, you know, the the connection to gasping for air in this life. In another past life, uh, her husband, who was a drunkard, um, came home and beat her up and strangled her and, and murdered her. In another past life, she was in the Blitz in the Second World War in London. And uh, the house was bombed and uh, she was burnt alive in the house, asphyxiated. And again, in the session, she's desperately trying to gasp for air. So you can see there's often the parallel between what happened in the life and the problem now. Physical problems standard thing. Uh, You know, I work with a lot of physical illness, it may be somebody with asthma has died of uh, being gassed in the First World War. Um, I had one magnificent case, which was a lady who came with a a back problem. And um, she had a severe back problem for years. She was putting weight on. She was depressed because of it. She'd even had surgery 
to find to try and fix it and the surgeons couldn't find a problem they just opened her up and stitched her back up again and sent her home with painkillers she came to me as a very left brain lady and her subconscious indicated there were four past lives causing this uh, back problem and the first past life was the big one she was a nazi soldier in the second world war and uh, she died on the eastern front in russia um, by being shot by a sniper and the bullet went straight through the back where exactly where the problem was when the bullet went in in the session she leapt about a meter in the air and screamed and yelled and then crashed down onto the chair and then died and choked and died and eventually passed away in that life and i think we went back through that life four times to fully clear it and the last time when the bullet went in she just made a slight murmur and that was it the back pain was completely cured after we the other three past lives are pretty small ones. Um, so often there's a parallel between what's happened in the past life and the problem in this lifetime. Absolutely. And there's also the parallel, I suppose, with, with do, you, do you feel like in the work that you've done, there are such thing as contracts with people that, you know, you you come back to work things out in a different way with some folks that we've have, have in our lives uh, that, that we, yeah. we could name a few maybe? Yes, and yeah. we do. We t we sort of tend to be uh, there are what what are called clusters of souls, groups of souls. So, if you think once we die and we pass over, then our soul um, moves into the spirit world. And if we're if our soul is at the center, then there are other souls all the way around us. And the ones that are closest to us are the ones that are closest to us over many lifetimes. And of course, we are around each other in different ways. So, your mother now may have been your uh, husband in a past life, your sister, maybe an uncle, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and often, sometimes we're in somebody else's past life in order to help them. Sometimes they're in our past life in order to help us or to to cause us problems because this is all part of the learning that we have to go through. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. And um, there's so much we can talk about right now, uh, and there's many ways we can take this conversation. But one thing I want to touch upon as well is the Akashic Records. Does that come into your work at all? Not very often, actually. It's a really good question, Kevin. It doesn't. Um, certainly, there is a way of regressing somebody back by getting them to visualize going into uh, a large hall where there are filing cabinets and shelves and they go back to a particular filing cabinet which is their lives and they go to a, one of the drawers and they go through the files and then they move into one of the files then that's the technique that some therapists some regression therapists would use to go into um, a past life but in terms of the akashic records from a therapeutic perspective they don't come up very often it's quite unusual. Uh, and I think the, the reason is because the subconscious feels it's not necessary for the client to do that. You know, they've come with a phobia. The phobia wants to be fixed. Let's go back into the past lives to fix the phobia. Would you call the subconscious the universal mind or the higher self? Or are they all different, do you think? Mm -hmm. The, the Freudian model of the subconscious is that, is that the, the mind is like an iceberg, and the tip of the iceberg above the waves is the conscious thinking mind. But the bulk of the iceberg is the subconscious mind. This, this is 0.001% or 0.001%. This is 99.999%. That's the Freudian model. But I will say that for me, having worked so extensively with the subconscious for 28 years, my belief now is that the subconscious either is the higher self or is intimately connected to the higher self. So it knows what is best for the client, it keeps the client safe, and it has an amazing wisdom. It's an awesome wisdom. Do you know, Kevin, there are times I work with a client and their subconscious mind will do some work with them, which will take my breath away. Yep. It's just extraordinary. It really yep. is extraordinary. That, that and is it's, such, it's an honor to be mm. part of that. Mm. Absolutely, it is, absolutely. And, you know, um, <sighs> Okay, let's just. I'm going to just take this into a little bit. I'm just reading my notes. So I'll take this 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 pause out. I just there's so many good questions in, and I, I, I want to try to follow your thread. But there's also I know we've only got a limited time here as well. Um, okay. Let's go to. Um, oh man, I just had the question in my head there. I hate those moments. <laughs> okay, let's just scrap that. We'll just go. We'll just go. Just trying to find it. 
No, okay, scrap that. We'll just go to something else. I'll take that out. Well, thank you for that. Thanks just for explaining that to us. Um, okay, then, future lives. Are there such things as future lives? Have you ever had any clients that have gone to a future life? Yes, absolutely. Uh, in fact, I used to do some uh, past life and future life workshops, group workshops, where we would take a group of people into a past life and then later on, we take them into a future life. Um, so it is absolutely possible to do. I, I haven't done a lot of it uh, because, first of all, from a therapeutic perspective, for me, it doesn't have a lot of value. Although certainly I have colleagues who will use future lives for therapy for clients. Uh, there's a very well-known English woman called Anne Yersh who does quite a lot of this. Um, but for me... It's of interest only. And what I used to find very often in the workshops is that my people in the workshops were actually saying that life on Earth in 300 years' time or 500 years' time is actually pretty unpleasant. It's not a nice place to be. There's been terrible wars and disasters, and uh, we can't go out into the sunlight because there's no ozone layer and there's no spirituality, and everybody's just sort of living underground. And it was actually pretty horrible. But actually, then I spoke to colleagues who were also doing future life workshops. And they were saying, but our people are saying it's wonderful. It's the age of Aquarius. There's no wars. Everybody loves each other. So I think, well, well I, so what, what's real? So for me, I, I'm more, for me, I think there's more chance that, that there's an imaginary experience there uh, than a real one. So I, I stopped doing it. But it is possible, definitely. To, to take people into what may be future lives. I mean, it may be that there are so many different threads going on. So out many there potentials, that, right? So many potentials that, that yeah. you know, if that's the potential that you want to create in your head, um, that's yes. the potential that in a parallel world that may be out there, maybe. Who knows? Do you know uh, what I mean? That's exactly it. Ex absolutely. But I'm just a simple fella. I just want to do my job and get people better. So I try not to overanalyze this stuff because you can go around and around. It's so well, cool. well, you can. And the proof's in the pudding <laughs> with the past life stuff in the sense that, you know, the past life memories um, uh, the, the, with your current behavior, with most people's current behavior, what, what surfaces in that current behavior is past life issues. That's the main thread of the work here. So, yeah, um, so, you know, I mean, yeah. I know, I know some people that do the future life stuff, but, um, I've not managed to, to get, get them on yet. But, um, okay. um, like you say, this is the crux of your work and I, and I, and I mean, I, you know, I've had past life regressions and I think they've been fascinating and, um, but I think, you know, with anything that you do, you've still got to, you're still in charge, no matter what past life session you've had, if you're not ready to change, you're not going to change. In most cases, in the vast majority of cases, that's absolutely the case. A few people, however, who are very hypnotizable, once they, even if they don't want to uh, change, they will change. Uh, I give an example of that a lady who came to me who was an alcoholic for 16 years, uh, functional al alcoholic. She went to work every day as a probation officer with, with prisoners. She got home. And by nine o'clock, she was drunk every night, half a bottle, three quarts of a bottle of brandy every night. And a friend of hers forced her to come to see me. And she only came to see me to prove that this bearded idiot couldn't help her. <laughs> so she, she was, there's no, she was so damn skeptical. And she sat in front of me and she was very, body language all closed down, very closed down. She allowed herself to go into trance though when I asked her to, when I started to, to, to use hypnosis. And she went into a past life became very emotional, released the emotion, and she has never dropped a drop of alcohol, never drunk a drop of alcohol since that day. And this is 18, maybe eight, 18 years ago, I would say. Um, so we did also further regression. She actually had a regression with Joan of Arc. She was in the life of Joan of Arc. Uh, she was a peasant, but she saw Joan of Arc and she spoke to her. Uh, she was also um, in the First World War. She died. She died in the uh, as a Roman. Uh, she died in an amphitheater. She was a Christian, torn to pieces by lions. Um, but she has not had a drop to drink, a drop of alcohol since that day. She's got a life back. So what I'm saying, I'm sharing that because she was damn sure that this wasn't going to work but her subconscious knew and it helped her so much that she just stopped drinking. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of forgiveness that get, takes place in a session with yourself. I'm sure there's a lot of, um, 
you know, a lot of the fears, a lot of the hates that we have for things, you know, maybe are able to be dissolved and, and uh, healed. Yes. And it's very deep stuff, Kevin. This is the thing. I, you know, a lot of people, as I said, will say, oh, it's all imagination. It isn't. When you see the reality of these sessions, if people could sit in and see my client sessions day after day, they would know this stuff is real. And, and also, why does somebody want to come to me to get better from a, a phobia by going into some past lives? It doesn't make sense, especially if they don't believe in them. Well, that's this right. This is very real. Absolutely. And can you... I mean, obviously, I believe in mainstream science as well. But, you know, can you, if you've got an issue, can you help to alleviate some of the pain of that issue, do you think, with a regression session? Can you heal the body? Yes. Yes. So uh, I had a lot of sessions, a lot of work over the years. I had a lady who came. She had six months to live when she came to see me. She had a liver disease, very rare liver disease. And there were two past lives um one she and both of them she'd been stabbed in a, in past lives once she was a native american woman who in a raiding party on her village somebody came up behind her and grabbed her and stabbed her in the back in another past life she was a young boy in the second world war who in poland i think who got bayoneted in both cases it was in the liver area um so there was also quite a lot of trauma in this life so we did work on that it saved her life she's now 24 years past the past her die-by date. I had a client in Oslo last year who came to me with lip cancer, cancer of the lip. And um, we found there were two past lives causing that. In both cases, she'd been raped in the past lives and she was unable to tell anybody about the rape. She had to lock, the, lock it all in, in both lives. So, of course, this is about the lip area. She couldn't speak out. So all of that trauma had gone into this area and come out in the way of cancer. Um, so we did the regressions. She changed, did some lifestyle changes, had some kinesiology. And she wrote to me a few months later to say, I've just got back from the hospital, Steve. They cannot find a trace of cancer in my body. So, you know, I'm not saying I can cure cancer. They're far from it. What I'm saying is there are many problems, many uh, traumas that go into every single physical so problem it's almost have. like you know by doing that work you're speaking to parts cells of your body aren't you there's some sort of connection yes. with the with this amazing thing that we have with this body um and all its uh, uh, functions and stuff so so he, so healing the past heals the present it keeps coming back to that doesn't it yes um, the, the mind and body are completely interconnected completely connected. now you know modern medicine dismisses this and it's all about just fixing something chemically every Physical problem has emotional causes. And so when we work on the emotional causes, we release them and the energy in that part of the body changes and then it can start to get better. It's, it's Could I also... Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. I was just going to also... I, I, I've got a free YouTube channel with free hypnotherapy recordings on there, Kevin. One of them is about healing the body. It's called hypno-healing. It's not about regression. It's about using the mind to visualize changes taking place in the body and also giving our body affirmations to change. And it, it's helped many people over the years to actually start changing what's going on in the body. Um, well, let's, so I'm let's link that below in the description. Okay, it's Hypno for All. Hypno for yeah, all. If you just go to the uh, description the below, four. then you'll see what Steve's referring to with, with, with that particular video. Absolutely. Um, karma, we, we, we did touch on that, and I said I was going to get back to it. What's your yeah. thoughts on that? Well, as somebody who's sort of practiced Buddhism for many years, I'm, I'm quite into the concept of karma. I do believe that uh, everything comes, what goes around comes around. Um, and I think uh, karma is played out over many, many lifetimes. So uh, on the, a part of me is very much into that traditional concept of karma. As ye sow, so shall ye reap. And over many lifetimes, we have to go through many uh, experiences in order to let go of things in order to grow etc 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 and the basic concept of course is well, as you so 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 shall you reap whatever you do to others will come back to you so for me that buddhist concept of i mean what did buddha say the teaching of the buddha is to um to do good not to do evil and to purify one's heart i think that's a pretty good way to live one's life um but i will say there's a part of me now that just wonders, do we really need to be reborn? 
I've started to look at and uh, one or two articles and things where some people are saying, do we really need to be reborn? If we are perfect as we are, shouldn't we just be able to, when we die, to move off fully and, and go to the source? So maybe you can. And, and I know there's certainly this school of thought, which I'm just starting to research this, so I can't give any hard and fast Maybe you just want this. to come back so badly. <laughs> Could be. I mean, who would want to, but maybe you do. <laughs> well, maybe, especially if you've had a life where it's been fantastic or you've been very much in love with somebody. Um, I mean, I'm so in love with my wife, I want to come back time after time with her. Um, however crap things are down here. Um, but, you know, yeah, I think there are occasions where we, I do think we need to learn over many lives. But I do wonder, mm. is it possible to step off this cycle of rebirth? Um, in an easier way. You know, I, I always wondered, you know, we've got this amazing body. We, we, we've got parts of our body, you know, the DNA and everything. We're still learning about that. The, the, there's probably so much science within our own universe, within ourselves, that we don't know. I mean, how much do we know about the brain, really? Do you know what I mean? No. Not a great deal. And you think to yourself, you, you know, I, I, is, is our memories contained within blood? Because when they do these blood transfusions, sometimes or heart transfusions, they take on the memories, or they they have they have the the, uh, the same likes and dislikes as the as the donor in a sense. Yes, you know it's yeah. it's so complicated. I mean, what are you what are we really tapping into when we call it past life regression? We're tapping into something, but what is it really? The only way I can describe it is an energy. That for me is a simple way, Kevin. It's an energy that comes from one life to another. Um, not all of our past lives ripen in this particular life right now. There is a higher self, there's a higher consciousness which understands why we have to go through things, what we are learning. And I think we have to trust that, that uh, everything we're learning is for a reason, however difficult it may appear um, on earth at times when we are in difficult times. Yes. Uh, everything is happening for a reason. And I think in a way we have to trust that process. Have you ever taken a client to that space where um, they may call the life between life? Yes. Oh, yeah, regularly. Bear in mind that most of the time I'm, I'm, my clients are dying in the, in, in the sure. chair in front of me. Sure. So they, they, they will usually go into spirit. They will usually go up into spirit and experience. Sometimes they have very deep experiences of what seems to happen after we die, as you say, in between life. And it does appear that we we go off into spirit. We go our our physical body is no more. Our light body is released. Uh, we often go to learn about the life we've just lived. Um, some people say that what they do is they review the life that has just been lived, and they can feel the feelings of other people who have suffered because of what we've done, and they will say that is hell. Because I'll be honest, I've never in. 15,000 sessions had anybody going to hell. It doesn't seem to exist. I Darn. think that's a, just a, a construct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But this idea that we, we experience what others have experienced because of the hurt we've caused them and with an op with a big, a, a much bigger awareness than we have on earth. Uh, yeah, cool. can, that you, is, that can, is can you imagine that? that? That is probably hell where you have to feel what you put someone else through. Um, yeah. You know, and, and there's no one, you know you know over you that's that, that that's going to punish you but really you know that that You're punishing yourself facing yourself i said this in previous interviews facing yourself is the hardest thing sometimes we don't want to, we barely do it in this life don't we <laughs> good point yeah you know most people run away from looking at the dark side even of themselves uh we don't want to know so yeah no we we, we don't um but with all this work, you have to trust yourself, don't you? Trust that you're going to go to a session for the right reason, that you're doing it because it's what feels right for you to do. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if anybody's, again, if anybody's looking for a therapist, um, you know, yes, I work on Skype, but by all means, find a, a therapist local to you. But be careful because, you know, you've got to make sure they're right for you. You want somebody who's professional, who sounds as if they know what they're doing. Um, because you know this is serious stuff. Of course it is. I mean, you know, yeah, it, it, no, it is. And uh, no one's going to get re-traumatized by going through these past lives. It's it's actually quite the opposite. As long as it's done correctly, yeah, it is possible to be re-traumatized if oh, right. you let's, let's say if you just go through it once and you need to go through it three times. So uh, one of the important elements is to go through it several times to fully release the energy of it. 
uh, and then the energy has gone. Then there's, there's nothing there and, and you just get better. Now, you had some, um, obviously, in your book, you've got some great stories. And if you wanted to share one or two of them, I, I mean, I know I've heard of one of the stories where, and I don't know if this made it into the book or not, but uh, you, 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 you researched it, that this lady came to you and she was Queen Mary. Um, ah, well, yeah. this, was, this was the first book. So, right, the first book, um, sorry, yeah. Yeah, and that's okay. I mean, th th this book is about the therapeutic aspects of, of uh, past life regression. In other words, people who came with issues and their incredible past life experiences, what they said in the sessions, how they played them out, how they felt and how they got better um, from a wide range of issues, from relationship problems, sexual problems, phobias, depression, weight, addictions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the first book, Famous Past Lives, was... It, for 10 years, when I was working as a hypnotherapist, my first 10 years, I did many, many past life regression sessions. And if I ever heard of anybody saying they were famous in a past life on the TV or on, in a book or whatever, I would think, oh, that's just an ego. That's your ego. Because every client I'd ever had was just an ordinary person in the past life, a peasant, a farmer, a soldier, a business person. And then one day... I got a call from a lady and she said, I wonder if you can help me. I was at work last week in my, in the office where I work and a man who works in the office, we get on very well. We were just good friends, but he passed me a file. And as he touched my hand, I immediately got an image in my mind's eye of a woman with long hair in a big, long, incredible dress in an old oak paneled room. And I felt very frustrated. And she said, I cannot get that image and that feeling out of my head. What is it? So I said, well, you know, okay, you might have been drinking too much vodka, but the chances are it could be past life. So I said, come and do a session. We'll see. So she came for a session. I re took her into trance, took her into that image of this woman, and she started to relive a life uh, as a very beautiful woman. And in this room, she was waiting desperately for a man to come to her. And this man eventually came and he was her lover. And they jumped into each other's arms and kissy, 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 etc. Um, and I thought, okay, so that's his past life. The man in the office is this man that she's waiting for. Let's go a little bit further. So I took her on in the life and she then moved into a scene where she is sitting on a throne with hundreds of people looking at her. And somebody came up and said, your majesty, as he bowed to her. And immediately my ears pricked up. I thought, wow, maybe a minor royal here. To cut a long story short, we did a lot more sessions and it appears she was Queen Elizabeth I, the great English queen from the 1500s. And we did session after session, and she relived this passionate love affair that Elizabeth had had with Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester, which is known about in the history books, but nobody knew, but, but there's not a lot of depth to it. So she put a lot of depth, a lot of passion in, the, in their encounters. Uh, and the, the pain that she experienced when uh, she had to tell Dudley that she couldn't marry him. And uh, so that was all interesting. And then at the same time, I had another lady who came for therapy who appeared to have been Queen Mary, and she's Bloody Mary, and that's Queen Elizabeth's elder sister. So from saying everybody who claims to be famous in a past life is a big ego, yeah, but, it's my attitude. But they're very few and far between, but I just wanted just to oh, mention yeah. that one because it's not yeah. often I get many past life regression people on. No. who have had that that's um sort of experience that that that's pretty cool but then again a lot of these were done in england a lot of the regressions that i speak to are obviously based in america that's right yes yeah so yeah. you know and uh, we do tend we tend to stay in the same sort of continents over several hundred years in most cases is that uh, over what you find lines. yeah yeah yes 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 as a general rule um, so yeah, it's usual to stay on a particular continent for several, you know, several hundred years uh, before we move on someplace else. Interesting. Have you done many lives where they weren't on this planet? Yeah, a few. And, and how resistive um, were you towards that information as well? 
Well, I tend to, <clears throat> I'm not a, a fool, but I am skeptical. So I, I want to, I'm looking for different certain signs in the session as to how real this regression really is, because a fantasy session, I can tell, I can spot that a mile off. It's so obvious that the experience with the client is so different to a real past life. Um, so I do tend to go along with it because if the subconscious brings this through as real, then I have to respect that as well. Um, so I had one past life, one client who was, a, an energy of flame energy on another planet. And then another client who was, um, a being from a much higher race than us from another planet, whose uh, spaceship crash landed on earth and he was, uh, he survived, but he, he was the lone survivor and he couldn't get back. So he then spent the rest of the time on earth terrified absolutely terrified he kept saying that what's wrong with them down here there's just so much violence and, and he knew that if he was found that he would be killed or whatever something horrible would happen so he spent a lot of time hiding away from human beings but he kept saying it doesn't have to be like this it doesn't have to be like this what's wrong with them before eventually uh, a spacecraft came and, and found him and took him back to his own planet. Um, and, and he just was astonished at, at, at life on Earth and what we accept is normal is not normal. It's a bit like living in an asylum at times down here. I think, isn't it? <laughs> Depends what channel you've got switched on, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah. But no, how, what year? I mean, I want to ask so many questions. What year was this that took what century? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't tend to look for specific information. What I'm doing when I'm usually doing therapy, I just want yeah. to get the emotion out. Absolutely. Um, so okay. usually I'm not looking for specific stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 sometimes I do, but not very often. Incredible, incredible. And I know there was... Um, well, there was one uh, Viking warrior and the psychologist. <laughs> yes. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't expect a psychologist to be into this stuff. And he, he certainly didn't know about past lives when he came. But he was struggling to to come to terms with the loss of a relationship. Uh, his girlfriend, his partner had, had finished with him and he was in a really bad state. He couldn't get, he couldn't let her go. He was still obsessing with her. He was still driving past the house six times a day, et cetera, to try to see her. Um, and there were several past lives that he relived where him and the, this woman had been together and they'd been sort of torn apart. And one of them was, again, a dramatic one where he was a Viking warrior or chieftain in a past life. And at one point, he went into battle. And when he was in the battle, in the chair, he, he, was, he, was, he, had, his, he had his eyes, eyes closed. But he was shouting and screaming and he had a sword in his hand in his man and he was thrashing, hacking away whilst he was in trance and shouting and screaming. And um, he was in the battle euphoria, you know, the battle of madness. And he was swearing and shouting as he was killing people. Um, and then he sort of, you know, he relaxed after that. And he was just a very prim and proper English psychologist. It was quite extraordinary to see this, um, this other side of him, really. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, do you ever get any clients? That's that's a great story, by the way. Thank you. And was he healed after that? In a sense, did he? He was. Yeah, yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there were several past lives. I mean, in one of them, he, the 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 woman who he lost, he she was a baby. He she was his baby who died, and he died, and so he lost his his child in the past life. So of course, when he loses her in this life, it's triggering off the emotions of the loss from those past lives. Absolutely, absolutely. And I was going to ask just there. Um, do you get any clients that kind of start talking in a foreign language sometimes or? Occasionally. It doesn't happen very often. I've had, certainly I remember one client who spoke what I think was Inuit. Uh, he was an Eskimo and um, he started to speak in some sort of Inuit language. And I, I, I wish that, in a way, I wish I recorded on my sessions because it would have been fascinating to, to, to hear more and then to get it verified later. I had another client who uh, spoke Italian. He went into the life. He was like a mafioso boss in Sicily. And what happened in the chair, he took on the characteristics. Most people, when they're relaxing in trance, are just relaxing in trance and they're just talking. But his whole body changed and he laid in the chair and he was arrogant. And he, was, da -da 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 -da. he was very, very, um, very much in character of this, this mafia boss. And he started to speak Italian. 
Um, so, because I don't, I had to stop it because I don't speak Italian. Right. Yeah, it's a bit of a block. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it's just incredible. I, 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 what you said earlier on about we sort of stay on the same continent. I just wondered, in the sense of, you know, d- does does the foreign language ever come up for some that may have had some lives on different continents? But um, it, it happens occasionally. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think if I went looking for that, I would get a lot more of it. Of course. Um, yeah. Whereas my work really is about releasing trauma and getting people to understand stuff from a past life well, and this life. What's been your journey doing this particular side of the work in, in the sense of your evolution, in the sense of what you feel is the nature of reality now, in a sense? Has it expanded you so much? Yeah, it's been quite a spiritual journey, although I'm very much a feet on the ground therapist. um, It has changed me as a human being. It's given me a much bigger perspective of life and what happens after life. And uh, it's helped me to lose a fear of dying because I understand that death really doesn't exist. It's just a taking off of one suit of clothes and moving into another. It's given me a deeper understanding of the importance of having a calm mind as much as possible and especially maybe at the time of death because I think uh, our mind at the time of death can depend on what happens after death and so for me it's also given me a bigger perspective on everybody has emotional baggage we're all carrying wounds and I it helps me not to be so judgmental you know it's easy to judge somebody else but when you realize that that somebody else is is working through on their own their own stuff just as anybody is then it's really maybe not their fault to some degree that they're behaving as they are so i severely sincerely believe that we all need therapy and going on from that you know the more if i may say i'm a passionate advocate for therapy because what for me what happens is when somebody releases some of their emotional trauma they become more balanced and when people become more balanced then they become less reactive and then they are more able to open the hearts and to live with the hearts and to live with love as opposed to reacting to pain all the time and what happens then is the more people on earth who become more balanced the earth becomes more balanced well of course of course because we start living a life that's that's more positive towards ourselves and others um, ab- absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, if, if there was a bit more self-love in the world throughout the day, uh, the, well, what, what's been showing in the lockdown, hasn't it, that we, we are loving towards our, our fellow human friends, yeah, you know, yes. people, yeah. um, you know, that we are helping, people are helping the next door neighbours, people are caring more um, about themselves and each other. But yeah, the world would change if we if we could just see that we are all magnificent and that we are you know, God is within. Do you know what I mean? It's it's everything. It's 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 who we are. Um mm-hmm. that there is no separation. Um you know, when 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 something like this a, a pandemic takes, you know, those who who are famous as well, you know, you know there there is no fame on the other side. It, it's all equal, no. isn't it? Do you know what I mean? There's no limits. We are all together. There's no separation. Everybody is connected in some way, and for me, the and the universal energy is love. And when we tap into that, then then we can change things. The whole world can change. Absolutely, it can. And just going back to traumas in the sense, well, not traumas, but health issues that we have, even if we've got suffering from migraines or whatever it may be, having a session can actually help to look into the deeper cause of that. But you've got to want to do it. You know, if you're mm-hmm. if, if you're going to go around and say, I'm going to self-heal, that's great. And you, if you believe it, you might be able to do it. But it's like anything. Sometimes you need a, some help, don't you, just to go deeper. <sighs> And I think there's nothing wrong with, you know, aiming to do self-healing, to do affirmations, to send love to our body. It's just that you often have to do that for some period of time in order for it to work. And sometimes you may have to do it forever. Whereas if you go to the emotional causes of the of the physical illness and release them, then the problem just gets better. You mentioned migraines. My, my experience with migraines is that they are usually caused by deaths in past lives where there has been blows to the head. And again, one of the stories from the book, a young man came to me who was 13 years old who had severe migraines every three weeks. He was missing days off school every few weeks. Very intelligent kid. 
And his mum sat in on the session. She sat behind me because she he was only 13. She wanted to stay with him. And this boy was a fast worker. There were eight past lives causing the migraines. His subconscious said, bear in mind, this is a 13-year-old boy. He doesn't, <laughs> doesn't know about past lives. But when he was in trance, his subconscious said, it's past lives. And we cleared all eight past lives in one hour. And he was a fast worker. So everyone was a death. So he went into, let's, I can't remember the order of them, but he was, he was in the first past life uh, and he was in a battle and somebody came at him with an ax and pfft, chopped his head he died and he went into the second past life he was driving in a car in a, in a recent past life uh, and the car was smashed into another car and his head smashed into the steering wheel dead and he moved into the third past life he was a man and his wife was having an affair and she came up behind him while he was in the garden with a spade and she smashed him around the back of the head dead and he went into the next past life where he was being bullied at school he was a young kid at school and the school bully was smashing his head against the wall dead and he went into the next past life where he was standing up on some steps and the step uh, broke and he landed down on his head <laughs> dead and he went into the next past life where he was fighting in a bar and somebody beat him up and kicked his head in we cleared all eight past lives in one session i mean i, I remember at the end of the session i turned to look at his mom and she was just sitting there going well, well do, do you think that that could be a case that the soul splits off and has multiple lives where they're close in the years together, in a sense, right? So he's not had all those past lives as, you know, going from this life, that life, that life, that, that, that life. Actually, the soul, in some ways, we don't understand, I'm just using words, has, has split, and, and it's an accumulation of all those bits, but that's... Do you, do you know what well, I mean? Can, can I mean? Yeah, I, I, if I put it a different way, I, I think I get, get what you're saying. Um, I have sometimes find that the soul, our soul is so large... It can split off and be in more than one person at the same time on Earth. Even in this lifetime? Even in this lifetime. So, um, the phrase, this happened, the first time this happened for me was a client who, in a past life session, was a, in the First World War as an Air Force pilot and was shot down and killed, 1916. A few weeks later, in another session, he was a woman in the First World War. And I thought, well, how does that work? Because that, that can't be real. But it was only when I started to do some further research into this, and I looked at um, Michael Newton's book, Journey of Souls, which is all about in-between lives. And he says, quite a lot of times we can be in on earth in more than one body at the same time. Our soul is so large. My sense with this is that somebody who has been very famous in a past life, a very famous person, I mean, people often say Cleopatra, that, you know, I've heard several people claim to be that they are the reincarnation of Cleopatra. And it could be that Cleopatra was just such a big soul that she's been able, that soul has been able to split off into more than one person on earth right now. So, yes, the soul can split off uh, in that way. And uh, it's fascinating. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, what is the most important message of your work so far, do you think? Oh, gosh, that's a heck of a question, Kevin. Um, I mean, several. One, one is th there is no need to f fear death because we come back many times. Um, but two is that we're all in the same boat. We're all on the same journey. We're all wounded individuals who need therapy in order to help us to grow. And my belief is that the more therapy we have, the more we are healing our soul and the less lives we need to come back. So I believe we're shortening the journey of many lifetimes by healing the past lives. And I think that's a useful thing because do we really want to keep coming back time after time into all this nonsense? Um, I think it'd be nice just to step off and just be up there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe there's free will to come back, and sometimes we're just addicted to things on this level. And I, I don't think there's, there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, will we ever know in our lifetime what it's all about? Absolutely not. Um, no. There'll be many shows in the future that we just like us to coming together, trying to, to talk about someone's work, trying to figure it all out, and we're, we're no wiser. But what we are, I suppose, is um, we're just seeing bits of that bigger reality, and that can only help, can't it? Very much so. Very much so. You know, there is something above the mundane 
So we tend to get brainwashed with the mundane, with living everyday lives, with physical and physicality. But there is something much, much bigger out there and much more important as well. And we can create the life that we want. Very much so. A absolutely the case. And I would say that therapists are all about helping people to find the life and to make life different uh, and to achieve what we need to do in life. And as I said earlier, when we do that, we become happier. We live in love more than we're able to when we've got a big bucket full of emotional baggage on our backs. What about someone come? Oh, I know I've got to stop here, but what about someone coming to you <laughs> right now? I've just got, you know, that's been through abuse and trauma. You know, mm. I mean, how does someone like that, with what's gone on in the present moment now with them or years ago, how does yeah. regression therapy, hypnotherapy or regression therapy help with that particular scenario? Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, we do see quite a lot of people who have been sexually abused as children. And uh, it can be, it's not always a fast healing process, because, you know, that type of abuse is the deepest form of abuse that anybody can, uh, can suffer. And its impact is far, far ranging. So we have to treat somebody like that with carefully and gently. We have to make sure that we're supporting them, that we are healing their inner child, as well as releasing the emotional wounds from the childhood abuse. So I tend to use a big bag of tools with that type of person, including regression, because once we get into regression and we release the emotional traumas, then they start healing at very deep levels. But they do need a lot of support. Uh, but it is definitely possible to heal from that type of abuse and from that type of emotional pain. And your website, Steve, one more time is? Lionheart-training.com And my uh, WordPress is hypnoblogpod.wordpress.com Well, Steve Burgess, I just thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thank you, Kevin. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you for having me.